Good morning, everyone. Welcome to church on such a beautiful Sunday morning. So glad you're here, and those online as well, thank you for joining us. We're going to start our service this morning with a brand new chant. The lovely Diane Vincent is going to lead us and, and uh, teach it to us, and uh, we'll, I think it's going to be pretty simple for us. We'll be, we'll be good. All right, so let's, let's give it a try and see if we like it. If not, then we won't do it next week. <laughs> How's that? <coughs> Here we go. We are all connected, a global family. There's no separation. Good morning. Okay, so we are so delighted to have you all here in person and on Facebook and Zoom. And this is the time where we just double check that our cell phones are all silenced. And let's join together in prayer, knowing that, yes, we are truly one life. We are all one life. We are all one life, one part of God, knowing that God is in all of it. God was in the buzzy little metallic green bee that met me when I opened the door this morning. God is in the universe, in the stars, in all that we see and all that we do not see. But what we're blessed to know is that we are all truly divinely guided. I know that I am divinely guided. I know that I speak my truth. I speak my word from this place of wholeness, this place of beauty, this place of peace. I recognize that God guides me in my words, in my thoughts, in my deeds, in the presence and the energy that I have here before you now. And because I know it's my truth, of course I only can know that it is the truth of all of us here in this place, in this perfect service. We were all guided to come here, to be one, to be part of each other's lives and to be part of God, knowing that that is who we are. So this perfect service from the volunteers, from the music, from the technology, and especially knowing that those perfect words, that perfect inspiration, that choice, that guidance, that love that comes through Dr. Mark today <coughs> moves us, reminds us, helps us, guides us in the knowing that God is all there is, and that's what we take into our lives. And we are refreshed and transformed in this knowing. Because I know that this is the truth, I am grateful. And so I say thank you. I release my word into this perfect law, knowing it is so. And so it is. And together we say, Amen. Amen. I am part of 
Please rise and join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please remain standing for our congregational song, Surely the Present. Please be seated. Okay, we're going to meditate for the next five minutes. I invite you to close your eyes and silently repeat the mantra, God's the love that I am. If your mind wanders, just bring it back to silently repeating, God's the love that I am. And I'll bring us out in five minutes.
Well, good morning. Thank you for being with us. Um, I'm happy to be here with you. You know, no place else I'd rather be. We had a dinner here on Friday night. We had a little French dinner, and it was great. So if you came and you supported us, I thank you so much for that. We had a really wonderful time. Uh, you know, I think that uh, in the science of mind teaching, when it's time for us to learn something, the situation arises, or the situations arise, that support the greatest learning for us. Now, one of the things that I think has always been interesting is that I feel like I've been here before. I thought I got this lesson already. Didn't we already do this? But what I realize is that Ernest Holmes teaches this concept of an upward spiral, that the soul's journey is always moving upward, never going back. Okay? So this is the most evolved, the most advanced, the most conscious your soul has ever been. And so what I realize, though, is that sometimes as, as the soul is making its journey up the spiral, it looks like, oh, I've been here before, but the fact is it's not the exact same place because now we've moved up the spiral. So the view is similar but a little higher because we've risen up in consciousness, right? So we've, we're, we have a somewhat greater awareness. I think refusing to learn the lesson when it comes around, even if it's come around again and again and again, Refusing to learn that lesson, I think, can be more painful than the actual lesson. You know, because sometimes we dig in our heels like, no, I don't want to deal with this. I don't want to go through this. I don't want to deal with it. You know? And that makes it even worse. Now, we teach in the science of mind that there is no time in God, that everything is happening right now. It's, you know, past and future, it's all happening right, right now. But people often think that they have to get 
all their stuff handled. They've got to get their own healings handled, and they've got to get their stuff figured out, and they've got to figure out their career and their relationship, and I'm going to just get my health to be together. You know? And once I get all that stuff together, then I can really go for it fully in life. Then I can really, really dive in. You know? um, now, the way it works, I think, this is what I think people are saying to themselves. That what people are saying is like, you know, if I, once I finally get healed, when I get healed, then I can serve. And I'll tell you honestly, I thought that way for a long time years ago. And then I realized it's like, no, it's if I serve, if I show up, if I participate fully in my life, then I'll be healed. Right? So, so I think we've had it backwards. We've thought, hmm, when I get healed, then I can show up and participate fully in life, and it's now the other way around. It's like when I participate fully in life, that's how I will actually get healed. See, we have the capacity, I think, to rise above the challenges in our life and in our world. Science of Mind teaches us that, yes, God is all there is, that love is the way, and your thought is the most powerful thing you have to work with to heal and evolve and grow and change and have some level of mastery of your life. For us, it all comes from this awareness of we are one with God, and my thought is the thing that takes me there or takes me someplace else. So to God, to the infinite mind, I think that the infinite is able to handle all of it. You know, I mean, sometimes I think the stuff that's on my plate is so big, and I have to remind myself, you know, I humanly don't have to do this alone. There is a principle, a power, and a presence that I call God, and God is with me, and with God all things are possible, and I take a deep breath, and I jump in, <laughs> and I do that again and again and again. The, the, the obstacles I think we encounter can be so often can be our excuse why we don't express or we don't have more of the life that we say we want to live. So those may be inner obstacles. They may be outer obstacles. So the inner obstacles would be the crazy stuff that we tell ourselves, that we're not good enough, that we uh, um, are not smart enough, that we're not young enough or old enough or educated enough or blah, 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 blah. You know, you just fill in whatever you want to fill in there. But there's a really terrific line in A Course in Miracles, and it says, I am not a victim of the world I see. I am not a victim of the world I see. So then I have to ask myself, well, then how do I want to be? How do I want to be? If I want to not feel at the effect of everything that's happening in the world, and God knows a lot's happening in the world, how do I want to be? Well, so this is what science of mind teaches us. We change our situation by changing our mind, and changing our mind, and changing our mind, and keeping it changed. So I'm very grateful now, uh, being an older person, that I had really good adults in my life growing up. A lot of really, really good people. And one of those was, was my father. And my father was one of those people who wherever he went, he met friends. You know, he never met strangers. He was just one of those people. He was not a pretentious person in any way. And he'd just start talking to anybody and everybody. And, and when I would ask him about that, he would say, good people are everywhere. Don't you know that yet? Good people are everywhere. There are good people everywhere. God didn't just put good people one place on the earth. God filled the whole earth with mostly good people. And he says, yeah, you know, there are a few rotten apples, and they kind of ruin it for others. But, you know, basically people are good. So growing up with my father, um, as we would go about doing things like, you know, errands on the weekend or visiting grandparents and great aunts and uncles and all that kind of stuff, we would encounter a large variety of people. And my dad would always say, good people are everywhere. Don't you know that yet, dummy? The, the dummy was his personal touch there. Um, but you know, people like to, I think, step back. You know, this is what I've observed. They want to step back from, from their own experience, actually, and say, like, I'm going to see how it's going. And it's like, well, if you've stepped back to see how it's going, how could you possibly know? Because you're not actually engaged in your own life. You're not involved in the experience fully or completely, whether that's a relationship or, well, I'm going to pull back at work and see how it goes and see if I like this job. Or people do this in relationships all the time. Well, I, I like them enough that maybe I'll go out, but I'm going to kind of see. I'm going to hold back and see if, I, you know, if this is really where I want to be in relationship. How would you know? Because you haven't really showed up fully, right? So you don't even know what that is like. Um, the situation is here for, for you, for me, to practice being who we say we want to be, who we think we are that people aren't getting. You know, that's what this situation is here for. That's what this relationship has come here for, because it's the perfect opportunity for us to practice showing up 
as who we say we are. You know, what we do on a daily basis affects the whole. We know that. This is, the, this is our teaching, you know. And so the invitation is to participate in a consciously awake, aware way. Because I think that meaning comes from participating fully in life. When we participate in a partial way, I don't think, you know, I suppose it's better than not participating, but I think we don't really get the juice from when we really dive into something and give it everything we have. See, meaning comes from participating fully in life. I've always loved Abraham Lincoln. Uh, I, he's just such an interesting, interesting character to me. Um, and the thing that I realize about him now, and I've read a lot about him over the years and watched many movies, as I'm sure you have too, that Abraham Lincoln took on an enormous amount as president of the United States. And, and you know, the northern states hated him because they all thought the war was going to be over really quickly. And they like, why, why, are, our, why are our children dying here? You know, and, and the south hated him you know, because they had their way of being and they did not want him interrupting that. And so on top of that, the North hates him, the South hates him. He's having a really difficult time. He struggles with depression, you know. He's lost his son, his young son, Tad, who he just was crazy about. His wife is crazy, sorry. Um, and, you know, but all that and more and more and more, all of that, he did not say you know, I'd really like to bring an end to slavery. I think it's the right thing to do. It's the decent thing to do. It's the moral thing to do. It's the godly thing to do. But, you know, I've got all this other stuff going on right now, you know? You know, my wife's a little wacky. I've lost my son. The North hates me. The South hates me. I've got to clear all this stuff out. You know, when I work through all this stuff, then I could... No, it's like, you know, all this garbage was happening in his life, and, and still the higher purpose called him that what I'm here to do is to bring an end to slavery, right? When I think about um, family, uh, a lot of my family is gone now because they've, they've passed on, but in family, I think what makes us family is I don't think it's a blood thing. I think it's that we feel bonded together, you know? Uh, and Family is like when we're in a situation and we feel like we're in it together. It could be good, could be not so good, you know. Uh, and so thinking about that, I think life is not about what you get. Life is really about what you give, you know. So if we have relationships with people, um, I would ask us to think about, let's, let's look into that. What am I giving into this relationship? What am I, is this a relationship I want to give into? See, if we don't give ourselves fully to the relationships, to the situations we have, how will we know, how will we ever, ever know if it was the right place for us? Right? That I think the universe demands that we participate fully, and then the universe backs us up. 100%. But if we participate at a few percent, the universe kind of backs us up at a few percent, right? So participate fully. The universe helps you to move forward. If you've learned all we need to learn from what the universe is presenting us. Remember, we're on this upward spiral. So even though it may look like, God, I've been here before. I can't believe I'm struggling with this same old bag of stuff again. Participate fully, and the universe will help move you forward. You know, I think we've, uh, we've all done lots of letting go. My joke about this is that I have certainly done lots of letting go in my lifetime. And how I know that is that there are deep, deep claw marks on everything I've ever let go of. You know, it was not an easy process for me, like taking my fingers out of everything. And so whether that was like a home or a job or a relationship, we all have lots and lots and lots of letting go. Even with people, you know, my goal, my goal is, to, is to keep people in my heart even though some people we have to let go of, right? But in some instances, we keep people in our heart, but maybe not on our porch. Do you know what I mean? Because we have history with people, and we know they are not for my highest good, or my boundaries are that I cannot be with them in a healthy way right now. So we have to have a little distance here, and I really wish you well. I have a place for you in my heart, but you can't come to my house. I'm sorry, you can't, you can't, you know, with some people, right? We, I think we probably all have that. And, and I think we think it's unspiritual. I think we think, oh, if I were really spiritually evolved, I could let them be however they're, no, you don't have to do that. Spiritual path is also very much about discernment, you know? Just because you're spiritual doesn't mean you have to open your house and let everybody live there. 
right? That's not what we're talking about here. You know, I think letting go, this idea of letting go inclines us toward surrender, right? Because I think there's actually a little distinction between the two. Surrender to me actually now feels like expansion, right? It feels like freedom, that we're no longer a slave to whatever it is on the outer plane or even the inner plane that's been happening for us. People often, uh, uh, people often, as do I, <laughs> hold very firm uh, or, it, you know, it's like I want to hold it and I want to let it go. I want to control it and I want to give it up. It's, it's, it's that paradox on the spiritual path. You know, so we can say, well, do I hold firm to what I say I want, or do I let go and do I surrender? This comes up all the time on the science of mind. And the answer in the science of mind teaching is actually it's both. The answer is both. Do all that you know how to do. You know, so when we are working on something, all right, let's just take the world. What a good project to work on. We are working on creating a world that's more what we think it should be, okay, whatever that is for you. So what am I going to do about that? Well, I'm going to do spiritual mind treatment. That means I'm going to pray every day, and I'm going to meditate, and I'm going to do my affirmations, and I'm going to journal. Because the whole point of the journaling is so I have a little more self-awareness, you know? And I'm going to forgive, and I'm going to forgive, and I'm going to forgive, and I'm going to be grateful, and I'm going to do everything I know how to do, right? That's the part. That's the part, you know, is, is it about sticking true to my vision? Well, there, I just did. I just stuck true to my vision. You know, or is it about letting go and letting God? Well, after you've done everything you know how to do, I think that's where the letting go comes in. But here's the distinction I want to make about letting go today. That letting go, I would let go if I weren't so afraid, right? <laughs> you don't need to get uh, the fear to go away, though, to let go. In fact, if what we ask ourselves is, what am I afraid of? What am I afraid of? See, Ernest Holmes gave us this very simple teaching, and, and I think it's, it's, you know, like so many things, they're simple and profound at the same time. Ernest Holmes said, treat and move your feet. That you've got to pray, then you've got to do the work in the world, right? But he didn't say do the work in the world, and then if you have a little time left over, squeeze in a few prayers. No, he said, you have to treat and move your feet. And what he means by treat is that he wants you to establish a consciousness where you are so convinced of the goodness of God within you and in the world that that becomes your reality. And then you say, all right, spirit, now what do I need to do? Is there anything I need to do in the world? What is my part in this? You know, cause, and it may be that your part is absolutely to pray and meditate every day for the light of God to enter into the consciousness of humanity in a greater way. Like, I'm on board with that. That sounds really good to me. I'm willing to do that. You know, but is there any other moving of my feet? And I suspect that that's probably different for all of us. You know, one of the ways I know that something is mine to do is I chew on it. I chew on it for a long time. <laughs> Grouse about it, complain about it, mitch about it a little bit, blah, blah, blah. And always, always, when I catch myself doing that and I turn my attention inward, what I find is this. Oh, God, this is just such a big conundrum. What are you going to do about it, is what I hear, right? That's what comes, what are you going to do about it? It's like, oh, you know, because it doesn't take, there's no talent in seeing that a situation is bad. There's no talent in seeing that things could be better. There's not particularly any talent in seeing the trouble in the world. The talent really comes in when we actually are able to contribute to doing something about it on a consistent basis. You know, people will say, well, I would let go. I would let go more if I wasn't so darn afraid. But, you know, you don't have to have the fear disappear, right? Just ask yourself again and again, like this is my thing, what is it I am afraid of? You know, I think people think and have thought for a long time that they have to act on every thought that comes into their head. We all know people like this. They say everything that comes into their head. Just because it comes into their head, they give voice to it. You think, really, you did not think about that before you just said that, did you? No, okay. We have no filters on today. <laughs> See, part of becoming big and spiritually mature is that we have discernment, and we know that just because a thought passes by doesn't mean it needs to come out. Not all thoughts, thoughts, not all words, not all ideas are worthy of expression, are they? No, they're not. I am here to tell you that's the truth. So something says, you know, some, I think there's a voice in us that rises up and says, oh, I just don't know how to deal with this. I just don't know how to deal with it. I don't know what to do. It's too big. It's too much for me. 
But Ernest Holmes said, I humanly do not know what you need to do, but I am convinced, this is what our founder said, I'm convinced that there's a principle, there's a power, and there's a presence within you that if you will turn to it with mechanical regularity, it will reveal to you exactly what you need to know. And this, I think, is really a fundamental strength of our teaching. That humanly, you know, if I say, all right, Mark, what do you need to do to fix the world? That's just all going to come from my good opinion. It's going to come from the past. It's going to come from what I think I know and all that kind of stuff. In the mind of God, there is a higher idea. I am certain of it. In the mind of God, there is a better idea. And so our job is to become that place where that bigger, better divine idea can be expressed through us into the world, you know, to, to be willing to welcome that greater truth. Can I, can I let... This is what I call it now. Can I let my wise heart lead me as opposed to my head, my mind that's filled with all kinds of opinions and likes and dislikes? Can I let my wise heart lead me? You know, in letting go, I feel there's still a little bit of strategy on my part when I say I'm going to let this go. If, see, because if I know if I let it go, then I'm going to feel better. And there's a little strategy there. You know, if I let go, then a little more of what I want is going to happen. I'm going to get a little... You know. So let go and surrender are different. I find in surrender, there is a freedom. Surrender is not a strategy at all, but sometimes letting go has a little strategy in it. You know, that we're still sort of lightly manipulating in a non-real threatening way to the universe, but we're still manipulating a little bit. And so people... I think, become very reluctant to surrender. Because why? Well, because we choose comfort over peace, you know? You know, surrender, I think, is all resistance of any kind ceases to occur. <sighs> so I think, all right, what are the things that can get me to a place where I am able to surrender? And I think it's all the stuff we already know. It's about doing a spiritual practice. It helps me be able to surrender. It's about having faith. It helps me be able to surrender. It's about being the loving person I know that God intends for me to be. It helps me surrender. It's about being really exhausted sometimes and I just have no more energy. So, okay, I can surrender this. It's about curiosity also. Sometimes we can surrender out of curiosity. You know, so to let go, I think, is still a bit of a strategy of the ego. It's still me trying to do it, I think. But surrender is not a way to make it all right. Remember, when we talk about surrender here, God does not want to control us. God is seeking only to fulfill us. I believe that the infinite spirit that created life out of itself is seeking only a greater expression of itself by means of us. So that means God is trying to fulfill itself by means of us. Surrender is not a way to make it all right. That's the piece I think we need to get. But because I want my life to be a vessel for God, that's my incentive for why I will surrender. So I do everything I know how to do spiritually to give my good attention to praying, you know, for a peaceful, loving, harmonious, compassion, compassionate, kind world that I think is what we're supposed to be living in. You know, again, because I want my life to be a vessel for God. You know, and so not my will, but thy will be done. So I suspect that we've all let go of millions and millions of things, and, and that's good. I think that's really good. You know, there's that um, old saying that angels fly because they travel lightly. And, uh, and I think... Um, my angels have been burdened with a lot, a lot of luggage. <laughs> so so, so they, they may not be flying. They're sort of just sort of off the ground a little, you know. <laughs> it's like, boy, we could really fly if you let go of some of this baggage, Mark. And so that's what I'm talking about us doing today. You know, that there are things that we've got to let go of. There are things that are bigger deals that we've got to surrender. And I think there's no time like the present. Let's do that now. So we turn our attention inward for a moment, recognizing, remembering that we are surrounded and filled with the presence of infinite loving intelligent spirit. God, the one mind, creates the universe and all of us out of itself. And I know that God does this so it might know itself in a greater way. God knows itself by means of us. And so in this awareness of our connection with God, I further know that on the unseen side of life, we're all connected with each other and that we have incarnated for such a time as this, that our soul is here for this exact time. It's no mistake 
I know lots of us think we should have been born in another century or we should be born a hundred years from now, but this is the perfect time for our spiritual growth, for our evolution. You know, and so whatever the lessons are that are being presented to us, I know we move forward with eyes wide open. We are willing, willing to learn what needs to be learned by us. And I declare for each and every one of us, if there's something we have to let go of today, a thought, a belief, an idea, a habit pattern, some way of being that doesn't serve us anymore, it doesn't make the world a better, brighter, more loving place, we let that go right here, right now. We are absolutely willing. And now we raise the bar. And if there's any place in our life where we need to surrender, if it's a relationship or our work or our home, some trying experience that we've done everything we know how to do and there's just nothing more to do, we surrender that because our desire is to be an open, willing vessel for spirit's expression. And I know that the infinite spirit of life itself does good things by means of each and every one of us. So I speak this word for the world that we live in today. And I declare that healings are happening everywhere. Every moment healing is happening because it's the natural order. The tendency of God is always toward greater life and greater love and greater self-expression. So I accept that we live in a world that is just and peaceful and compassion, compassionate and we include in our prayer today our family members and friends, parents and children, all of those we love and hold near and dear. And we remember, yes, every single one, just like every person on the planet, is God's perfect child in whom he is well pleased. So we bless our church, we bless all churches, synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together today that there is a raising up in consciousness for each and every one of us. And so with a full heart, I say thank you, God, that this is the truth. I release this word into law, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time again. I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll start our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. Okay. 
Well, that was truly a beautiful way to pass some time with Diane Vincent. Aww. Yay! OK, I have some announcements for you. If this is your first time at our church, we are delighted you are here. Please stop by the welcome table on the patio to pick up a packet of information just for you. Uh, we make it easy for you to make donations to our church. The text to give number and QR code are on your program or go to nhcrs.org slash give. Prayer with a Practitioner is available after service in person and on Zoom. Wednesday evening service with Reverend Sidney Steen. Meditation is at 6.50 p.m. and the service starts at 7. Join Reverend Sidney this week as she shares on the topic, Prosperity Requires Forgiveness. Love and Kindness Ministry, Lunch in the Park. Our Love and Kindness Ministry will be serving lunch to people who are homeless and others today at 12.30. <laughs> to support this ministry, contact Gilda Gomez through our website. Circle of Healing today at 1.15 in person and on Zoom. Join practitioner Mary Catherine O'Hart as she gently guides you via your chakras in a loving healing experience. The Zoom link can be found on our website under the Circle of Healing information. Hell in the Hallway, Light at the Door, workshop with Reverend Sidney Steen. I just love saying that. <laughs> Saturday, July 23rd, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., in person only. Cost is $40. Sign up on our website for this powerful workshop where you'll learn how to move gracefully through change into renewed and abundant life. Please bring a sack lunch. Abundance Workshop 2022 with Dr. Mark Vieira, five Mondays in August on Zoom only. Join Dr. Mark for this amazing workshop where you will learn how to expand your prosperity consciousness. Class will be from 6.30 to 8 p.m. and will be based on the book Spiritual Economics by Eric Butterworth. Sign up today on our website. Cost is responsible giving. Zoom Virtual Patio, before and after Sunday and Wednesday services, Zoom meditation every morning, Monday through Saturday from 7.55 to 8.15 a.m. Visit our website, nhcrs.org, to obtain Zoom links and more information about all our events and to sign up for weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. Thank you. Let's all stand and sing the peace song led by Diane. Oh. 
so please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I release all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Amen. Amen. Thank you.